Good morning, church. Good morning, church. It's lovely to be with you all. I mean, I think this is the sixth or seventh time we're coming to this church. We've done lots of uh, marriage enrichment, um, premarital. The last two times uh, we came here, uh, we did premarital, right? And uh, I was wondering when Dr. Pushpraj was telling me you can start the marriage enrichment uh, from the service. So, like, okay, let's see what the Lord uh, speaks to us. There are people who are married for more than 40 years, no? I see some elderly people here, 40 years of marriage. Uncle and auntie, right, praise God, right? Okay, right, whatever is it, it's God's word. We'll speak to them. And there are also people who are not married. And our time is also limited. Uh, we always want people to talk to us, you know, like it's uh, interaction. So we ask questions and you answer us and that's how we go. Okay? Um, God's heart and marriage. Okay. CMC has got a vision. Does it have a vision? CMC has got a vision? Yes. The vision is? What is the vision? Don't know. To serve and not to be served. Right. That is the aim or the vision or the goal of CMC. You're all wondering what's a. <laughs> Many of you are doctors from CMC and you're studying there. I ask you, what is the vision of CMC? You're looking at me. Right? Okay. Vision, below the vision, you will have the mission. <clears throat> right? How does the. How do, how do you reach the vision? Right? That's a mission. Marriage has also got a um, goal, a vision. I ask you a question. Why did you marry? Why did you marry? All those married people and all those young people who are not married, right? Why do you want to get married? Answer, please. Your father forced you to get married. Otherwise, I did not want to get married at all. <laughs> yes. Those days, yes, parents, not like when you're about 22, 23, 24. Okay, you're old enough. We cannot feed you. Get a wife. Get a husband. Go. Earn. Then? Any idea? Any, any other answer? Why did you marry? Because a lot of youngsters are here. Mm, we want to ask you why you are seeking and knocking the marriage doors. <clears throat> See, imagine I'm a madman and she's a mad woman, right? We got married. And what will God call us? Mad family. <laughs> if you do not know the goal of marriage and if you do not know where God wants you to go, what will God call your families? What will God call you? Mad families. So <laughs> the Bible says, stand at the crossroads and ask where if you are struggling that where you want to turn, the Bible says in Jeremiah 6, 16, go to the ancient path. The ancient path is for us the Bible. Okay. So what does the Bible say? Okay. What is the goal of marriage? Right. Why every, okay, youngsters, they want to come in. The older people, they are like, uh, some are surviving, some are thriving. Okay? So, in marriage. So, it's a beautiful institution. So, the, what is the goal of marriage? Why everyone wants to come in, into it? Right. Okay. Your children, your child is asking you, Papa, mommy, why did you get married? We don't want to get married. You know, the media is bombarding them with lots of wrong ideas. The LGBT is there, right? Then some children are telling, why marriage? Living relationship is good, right? We can have a friend, living relationship. And our children are being bombarded with wrong ideas. Why do you think, what answer will you give your child you need an answer not to give them you need that's what it says in 1 peter chapter 2 uh, uh, yeah and uh, yeah, yeah and verse uh, 15 
you need to give them an answer gen in, in gentleness. I'll give you a clue, okay? <clears throat> in Tamil Nadu, or in Andhra and Karnataka, when a ma wedding happens, they put banners, right? And in the banner, the boy's photo and the girl's photo will be there, names will be there. They will put some symbols. What are the symbols they put? Heart. How many hearts? I, oh, this church is very quiet. How many hearts they'll put? Two. Two hearts, two hearts. One in this hand and the other one in, in the other hand. Is it like that? Yeah. Yeah, together, overlapping each other. Now, I gave you a clue. Now come out from the second chapter of Genesis. The next clue. What is the goal of marriage? What is that one? Yeah. Man to be alone. Then? Okay. Genesis chapter 2. That is Genesis 2, 1, 18. 18. Sorry, 2.18. Okay. 2.24. Two, two shall become one. one. The two shall become one is the goal of marriage. Right? It is You're not, being married for it is not uniformity. Years, right? Okay? It is becoming oneness. It is unity. Okay? Unity is not uniformity. Okay? We don't think uniformly. But we are united. Two shall become one is the goal of marriage. Because Jesus Christ reiterating the same thing in Matthew chapter 19 and verse 6 he said, So they are no longer two, they are one. What God has joined together, let man not separate. So that's the goal of marriage. Okay? God wants couples to become one. Okay, so you need to, so when people ask you the question that why you want to get married or why you are in the marriage, why you are talking about so much about marriage, because it is God's plan that we need to become one. Okay, so to becoming one is the goal of marriage. The start of the wedding day till uh, death separates us from each other. We need to work for oneness. Okay? So... Yeah, it's a command. The two shall become one. But why? Why should the two shall become one? Because we worship a God who is Trinity. Right? The word that we see in Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verse 4 says, Your, O Israel, the Lord, your God is one. Right? Hear, O Israel, the Lord, your God, is one. The Lord, the God that is put there, it's a plural, okay? Multiple, there are many people as one, okay, got it? And the one that is used in Deuteronomy chapter 6, 4, and the one that is used in Genesis chapter 2, 24, are the same word called a card. It means it's a compound, right? It's one, okay? So... God wants us, the moment you hold your spouse's hand and say, I do, there is a call to you. The call is, we have to, we have to reflect the triune nature of God. It's a call, right? Okay. I ask, who are you? Who are you? You are glad with. Who are you? Yes. Okay. When I ask you, who are you? I'm Gladwin, I am Pushp Singh, and I'm a doctor in CMC. We tell that. Is there anyone to tell, I am a husband, I am a wife? We ask you, who are you? I'm a husband. That is the greatest call, you know? Why? Because, like, it's a call to reflect the triune nature of God. Okay. You come home, you stay with us for some days and you're influenced by our life. Right? You see yourself as a very lovely, lovely couple. Okay? And you're influenced by our lifestyle, right? And our living. Oh, you and you say, 
We want to live like them. What? We want to live like them. There's a question in you. How is it possible? What is the secret of your marriage? Ask a question. Okay. So, God has called us. We need to reflect the triune nature of God, right? And how do we reflect the triune nature of God? By our unity and our love for each other. So, marriage, when we are so lovey lovey, we reflect the nature of God. Right? The father loving the son, the son loving the father. The oneness in them. They don't, they don't disagree at all. And God wants us to live that kind of a life. Like the triune God. What a privilege. What a call. The greatest call is to be a husband. The greatest call is to be a wife. If you fail as a husband or if you fail as a wife, you fail in every other thing. Even your prayers are not answered if you fail as a husband, if you fail as a wife. So it is a beautiful call, it is a wonderful call and also it is the highest call. Because this call has no retirement. No retirement. Yeah. Right? Only death only can separate us from each other. What a shock for many people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no retirement. Right? Understand? So, it is, so, marriage is a call, it's a call to be the gospel, right? I can be a gospel as a single person. I can go and preach everywhere, say, God is love, Jesus loves you, he forgives you, he's a forgiving God, you come to him, no. you love heaven, you love eternity, mm. and all these things. Don't listen to him, okay? Past one month, he didn't talk to me. He is telling God is loving, it seems. To be a gospel together is the toughest job, right? I can pretend to be a gospel alone as a single person, but I, I can lie everywhere, right? But to live the gospel is the toughest thing, like the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. This is what marriage is. Marriage is a gospel in itself. It is a glimpse of a miniature heaven. Actually, God wants to bring down what heaven means to us. What, is, what heaven means to us? It's a, it's a glimpse of a small miniature heaven where you are accepted as you are. You don't need to pretend. Because between husband and wife, you don't need to pretend because your spouse will know that you are pretending or not. Yes, uncle. Yes. Thank you, Uncle. Thank you, Uncle. Yes, sir. Right. Surely they will see the gospel. Right. Okay? The gospel is to bring people to Christ. Okay, your marriage should reflect the triune nature of God. Okay, as, a, as Christians, we have been given a commission to give the good news to people, right? We go tell people, accept the Lord Jesus Christ and you will have eternal life. What is eternal life? You'll go to heaven when you die. Somebody asks you, have you seen heaven? How many of you have seen heaven here? There are some evangelists on the TV, they'll say, I have been to heaven 600 times, 700 times. You're not talking. It's like card party to Velo, 10 rupees ticket, no? They go to heaven and come back. Right? Have you seen, anybody have seen heaven here? What do you say? We'll say, it's in the Bible, no? Come Bible. home and see. Ah, you'll say, you may say it's in the Bible. For me, Bible is nothing. They'll say, right? I don't believe in the Bible. Do you have the boldness to say, come to our home? Our home is a miniature heaven. We have joy, peace, happiness there. Look at the way we live. Do you have the boldness? Oh, your home should be a good news. Is it, a, is it a good news or a bad news? That's a question. Your home is a good news or a bad news, right? The children. You know, in some, some, 
Christian homes, the devil they're scared to enter the Christian homes, some Christian homes. Why? Why they are scared to enter Christian homes, some Christian homes? You're all silent. Already Why? two big devils are there. Yes. Devil has no work there. Two hmm. big ones are there. Right? Oh, I cannot banish two there. Right? That's why we asked you, are you a good news? Are you a bad news to the people around you? Are you a gospel to the people around you? Is your marriage a good news of great joy to people? Those your children who are sitting here, you're go after your studies, after your work, you're going to get married. Pray that you people will make a marriage to be a good news. Okay? It has to reflect the triune nature of God. Yeah. Fathers, it's a beautiful institution. Fathers and mothers, what kind of a glimpse you give to your children? Are you living a good news for your children? Are they rejecting marriage? Right? That's a question for the parents today. And for the youngsters, prepare yourself that you make a beautiful home that will reflect the triune nature of God and you are a gospel. Because it is a call, call always connected with the responsibility. Okay? Call if there is a call. If you are a called as a musician, you have a responsibility. If you are called as a worship leader, you have a responsibility. So, being a husband is a call and being a wife is a call, always connected with the responsibility. So, we should be willing to take that responsibility as a husband and a wife. So, that's a beautiful, that Father, Son and the Holy Spirit, they have their own responsibility. They have taken it willingly, voluntarily. It's not forced upon. Okay? It is willingly, voluntarily, they have taken the roles and responsibility. Like that, we need to take our roles and responsibility that God has given to us. So, hmm? so we said marriage is a call to be a gospel, right? Marriage also makes you holy. Okay? Uh, some young people, they come and uh, say, no, no, Anna, I don't have patience at all. No, I'm, uh, I, I, don't want to get to, I don't want to get married. I said, you want to become patient, right? Get married, man, get married. Marriage sanctifies you. Marriage makes you holy. Yeah. You know, we are made in the image of God. What is the image of God? What is the image of God? It's his character. Right? That he has put into us. God blew into the nostrils of man the breath of life. Breath of life means the Holy Spirit. Right? So he gave us a spirit so that we will live like him. Okay. Just imagine I am Adam and he was not made at all. And I am there alone. And I have the nature of God in me. Love. Okay. So I walk, go around walking the garden telling... Adam, I love me. Adam, I love me. Adam, I love me. Is there any meaning to it? Is there any meaning to it? No. Ah, I want to tell you something. Christians are good in putting the sign of the cross. When they see a church, what do they do? Right? When they see a cross, they'll kiss the cross. When, when, even in the, at the cemetery, when they see a cross, they'll put the sign of the cross. When I ask you questions, Yes, no, give me an answer. What did I ask you? What did I ask them? I forgot. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm talking to myself and telling, Adam, I love me, Adam, I love me, Adam, I love me. Right? Is there any meaning to it? Why? If there is love... <clears throat> You need if a, I have the nature of you God You need another me, person to love. You need another person to show God's love. You know. So God made a steel for Adam. Is it so? No. He made Eve entirely a different person. Personality wise, emotional wise, sexual wise, like every way God made a different person. Okay? 
of a woman and he said told adam adam you have then my characteristics in you and eve you also have the same thing in you i want to see you loving each other forgiving each other sharing with each other caring for each other showing mercy and grace so we start practicing love loving 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 right what happens to us what happens to you when you practice love forgiveness care and mercy and all these things what happens to you you grow into the likeness of christ so this is the place where you get trained for the gospel right if you fail here to show if you're not able to love one woman your wife right how can you go and tell the gospel to the others if you're not able to love one husband the husband that god has given you what are the two uh, commands that god gave that uh, most golden commandments love your lord with all your heart and all your strength and all these things that's not the second commandment love your neighbor yes love my rosy susy daisy crazy and crazy neighbors who's my nearest <laughs> who is my nearest neighbor rosy susy daisy you know ramesh viresh suresh dinesh who's your nearest neighbor my wife my husband right if i am not able to do that then how can i be the gospel so marriage sanctifies us it god wants us to practice love forgiveness is grace and mercy here yeah. right so if i preach i can be a good preacher if it does not happen here my children will say father phew, you're useless don't go and preach outside so so the goal of marriage is to becoming one it's a call to be a gospel it's a call to reflect a miniature heaven marriage makes you holy the so second when god brought eve to adam i want to tell all the youngsters here god didn't bring a steve okay so don't choose the same gender for yourself okay it's you need to choose a opposite gender who loves god so it's it's god's plan in marriage Ma male and female has to come together so that is the marriage plan it is not even debora it is not uh, adam and steve okay so it is adam and eve so if you have any kind of a disturbances it's always good that you come to god that will go away from you seek help from a good counselor or a doctor right okay marriage is a call the second thing is marriage is a covenant what is a covenant what is a covenant it's make it's a, a strong relation. relation right there anybody here promise it's a promise yes if you read psalm 89 and verse 34 it says i will not violate my covenant or alter what my lips have uttered it says god says whatever i say will come to pass the words that i uttered out of my mouth will not return to me in void right so we are called to be like him whatever we say we need to keep uh, keep the promise that's a covenant that's a uh, 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 word for covenant this is a for definition for covenant you can say okay how do we understand a covenant okay covenant has been ha happening from adam and eve's day then god made covenant with noah abraham and so many people and today we are into a covenant with god what is that covenant called today are you in a covenant with god <laughs> yes and what is that covenant through his blood that's a new covenant you we take the 
communion นะ communion coming in union with God we come in union with God because we believe He shed His blood for us on the cross marriage is also coming in union, union with, with your spouse okay right so these two things in our church order it is called holy holy communion and holy, holy matrimony. matrimony no other things are called holy it no holy it not oh, it is uh, even baptism is called not called holy baptism no other thing is called holy only the union with god is called holy and the union of the man and the woman is called holy in the word of god okay let's see what is a covenant genesis chapter 12 god calls abraham and abraham was 75 years old he gave him three promises big huge promises okay i'll make you into a great nation i'll make your name great and the third one is the whole world will be blessed through you okay 75 years let's go to the 15th chapter did abraham have a child then no he did not have abraham there was a little doubt for him and he said lord you call me you said you'll make me into a great nation um, nothing has happened 13 years have passed lord so he gave an idea to god let lord i let me give you a suggestion I have a servant, a faithful servant in, uh, what's his name? Uh, Eliezer. Eliezer, he's from Damascus, right? Very faithful man, he's about 30 years old. I will adopt him as my son, okay? And he will bring forth ch children, and through him, your promise that I'll become a great nation will come to pass. God said, no. Not through Eliezer, Abraham. Come out of your tent, look up. Can you count the stars? No. I promise you once again that you will be like the stars in the sky. Right? Now do one thing. I'm going to enter into a covenant with you, Abraham. So for a covenant those days, three things are very important. Okay? Three things. One is altar. Remember this. Altar. The second thing is sacrifice. Blood shed has to be there. And the third thing is Genesis chapter 15 and verse 17. Can you put that on the Passing screen? Passing between the pieces. Right? Okay. I'll read this for you. I think you all can read this. So the Lord said to him, Bring me a haifa, a goat and a ram, each three, year, three years old, along with a dove and a young pigeon. Abraham brought all of, uh, all of these to him, cut them into and arranged their halves opposite to each other. The birds, however, he did not cut in half. Right. We don't sacrifice, but in the villages, they do sacrifice. Okay. Where do they cut the animals? Which part of the body? Neck, right? But what is said there is, cut the animal into two halves. Right? One on the right, one on the left. What do you find in the center? When you sacrifice, what will be in the center? Blood will be there, no? Right. Altar, sacrifice, cut them into two halves and put them opposite to each other, blood will be there. What is the third procedure? 18th, uh, yeah. 17th and the 18th. The 17th word. When the sun had set and the darkness had fallen, a smoking fire pot with a blazing torch appeared and passed between the pieces, right? The third thing is passing between the pieces over the blood. Who did that? Abraham or God? Who passed between the pieces? God did that. And he, know, he knows that Abraham is a mere man. Abraham may not keep the promise. So God himself, an higher authority, is promising an ordinary man. Okay, I promised you I'm coming into a covenant with you. Let me pass through these pieces over the blood. What is the significance of a man passing over the blood, between the pieces and over the blood? It means God challenged, told Abraham, Abraham, the three promises that I, I've given you, if it not comes to pass, I'm unfit to be God. Don't call me God. That's a challenge between Abraham and God. Right? 
look how serious a covenant is. I am, I, you don't call me God. I'm not that all powerful. Okay. The, because the Abraham promise, understood the seriousness of the covenant because from the beginning, the covenant procedure was like this. God made covenant with Adam. God made covenant with Noah. God made covenant with Abraham. The procedure is like this. So Abraham understood the seriousness of the covenant. But we don't know this kind of a seriousness because we are not practicing this. Okay, so we don't know the seriousness of this. So to understand what it means, let's go to uh, um, 4,000 4, years back, okay? Like uh, youngsters, they watch movies and our time mission. They go to the time mission, they set the time mission, go to 4,000 years back. Okay, those days, if you want to make a covenant, for example, want to sell a land, yeah. okay, to uh, Rabin. We have some land I okay. want to send it to Rabin. Rabin. Okay. Yeah, Robin or somebody. Yeah. So what we do now, we go to the panjaya, the elders of the village, and I tell them, I am selling my land to Robin here. Okay. And Robin will give me in silver, gold and silver. silver coins. Okay. So you hand over me the bag of gold and silver, and I, and I tell them, I have given my land to him. Then we cut an animal into two, a goat or a ram or a bull or whatever is it. And then we, we walk over the blood in the name of God and then promise to each other, okay, I have given you land, you have given us money. Mm. Done. Seal. Over. Right. Okay? After that, the, the deal is sealed, right, in the presence of God, in case after a week or ten days I go to Robin and tell, Robin, the bag that you gave me with your gold coins, some coins are missing. You told me you'll give me 100 pieces. You have only, you have only given me 75 pieces. Now, give me that 25 pieces, right? You're cheating me now, okay? If you step into my land, I will... What? You're all decent people. <laughs> I'll, in Tamil, I say, to the I'll cut your leg. Right? So, if I try to threaten him like that, if I try to cheat him, God has an answer for me for breaking the covenant. Read Jeremiah chapter 34 and verse 18. Right? I have made a covenant with him and I given my land and if I have cheated him, this is the answer from God for violating a covenant. Those who have violated my covenant and have not fulfilled the terms of the covenant they made before me, I will treat like the calf they cut in two and then walk between its pieces. Did you understand it? Right? Did you understand the verse? You cut a calf into two and made the covenant. What is the meaning of the verse? And if you don't keep the covenant, I will cut you into pieces. God is a little bit... Decent in, in words. Otherwise, Tamil should have put now a port dal donda sailena, right? I'll murder you. So so serious is a covenant. And so Abraham understood. That is why Abraham believed the Lord will fulfill. Okay. So here, the covenant says that if you violate a covenant. God says, what happened to the animal, it will happen to you. Okay? Okay. Now, in Malachi chapter 2 verse 14 says, marriage is a covenant relationship. Even in Proverbs chapter 2 and verse 16 says, marriage is a covenant. Right? Marriage is a covenant. Yeah, most of you would have got married in a church. No? Did anyone, anyone take a bull or a calf or a ram to the altar and sacrifice it here. Marriage is a covenant. Three things are covenant needed. Covenant needs an altar, altar sacrifice, sacrifice, passing, and passing between, between the, the pieces. Did anyone do a sacrifice here on your wedding day? Why? Why you didn't do? The requirements are sacrifice. One of the requirements. Already done. Hebrews 10.10 10 says, Jesus had already died for once us once. Once and for all, he was sacrificed. So, when you stood here at the altar, 
held your spouse's hand and what is the promise you said? Anybody new, newlywed? Newlywed year? No one? No? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How, yeah, many, yeah, how yeah. many months old? Two, Two months okay, old. Then fresh for Tell you. me Tell the us. promise you took at the altar. <laughs> Ooh, ooh, no because song. the problem is when you come and stand here, you look <laughs> handsome, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you also look very beautiful. <laughs> so, <laughs> whatever the the pastor says, they'll repeat it without understanding the meaning mind. of it, right? In richness, in sickness or in health, in richer or in poorer, in, in any situation. situation in any situation, I love what you. is that I have to do? To love you, to love you, to honor you, to cherish you, forsaking the whole world. I'll be faithful, faithful to, you. to you. Right? But we remember, what we remember? In sickness or health, or this one or that one, and all these things we remember. But the terms, the conditions are you know, like, to love, to honor, to cherish, to be faithful to you. This is what we forget, right? But we'll remember till death separates us. We'll remember, everybody will remember that, right? <laughs> so, marriage is a covenant. When he took the promise to love, to honor, to cherish, forsaking the whole world, you stood on the blood of Jesus Christ. And he took the promise in the presence of the Holy God. Those right. who are married, people may, maybe would have not heard this kind of a teaching. But those who are not married, you are a blessed people. Because when you, when you come into your marriage, you need to remember that you are standing on the blood of Jesus Christ and you are going to make a promise. It's a solemn promise. So that day you need to remember that the presence of God is standing with you because Malachi chapter 2 verse 14 says, I am standing as a witness for you. For that sign only, our church tradition, usually the walking on the aisle, the red carpet they come. Why the red carpet? Why do they put the red carpet? So walking on the blood of Jesus Christ. You are given entry into this place. Sanctuary because, because of, of the, the blood of Jesus Christ. You're walking over the blood of Jesus Christ. That's a significance. Most of us do not know the church traditions, but that is the meaning of it. When you walk, remember, you need to remember you're walking on the blood of Jesus Christ. You're given entry into this sanctuary. It's because of his death on the cross. Because the holiest of holy, it's difficult to, those days, it's, it, you, nobody can enter. Because of the blood of Jesus Christ, we can come to his altar boldly. Boldly I approach the eternal throne. Okay? So, you can come boldly. So, remember that you are standing on the blood of Jesus Christ. You are going to give a promise in sickness or in health, in richer or in poorer. Okay? After giving a promise, yes, wedding is over. Half an hour. Okay? Reception. Reception time. It's a time of uh, receiving gifts and fun and everything. Okay? Peter? Yeah, darling? All my college friends, you know. Really? Uh -huh. There's 10 girls? Yeah, yeah. Uh, what See, are they doing? Pam's father is a oh. uh, estate owner, you know. Oh, estate owner. Uh -huh. Where? Kurga? Kurg. Ah, mm. Or 2,000 and acres? Th those girls also. Huh? They are all from a rich, affluent family. Okay. Mm. How did I miss these girls? Just two hours back. Two hours back, you know. I love you, I'll honor you, I'll cherish you. <coughs> Within hours, you forget the promise. So how remember many children, times, those who many... are not married, once you take a promise, there is no girl bestie and boy besties. Yeah. All forget the excess. Only bestie should be your spouse. Forget the excess okay? and Y's and Z's. Yeah. Right? Right. Your, your only thing is, you're saying, Forsaking the whole world. She is my priority and I am a priority. He is my priority. Okay? So, that should be your covenant promise. 
That is the covenant promise you are entering into. So you may say, this is a Old Testament thing. New Testament, God died for us, so we are free from this. Let's read, if we violate the covenant in when God promised to us or whatever the covenant we violate, let's read Hebrews chapter 10, verse 29. For example, how many of us do not fight with our spouses? Married couples. Do you fight? Huh? 31 years we are fighting. Hallelujah. <laughs> right? See, if I don't fight with my wife, or if she doesn't fight with me, it means, like I have not understood her need. She has not understood my need. We fight because our needs are not met. Right? That's why we fight. So fights are like masala in a biryani. Biryani without masala is dog food. So, you know, dog food, no? Meat and white rice only. Okay, we have three dogs. Okay, so biryani without masala is dog food. So marriage without fight is like dog food. So we need fight, but we need to recognize, reconcile, come back together. How many times we have promised now to love you, to honor you, to cherish you and all these things. Do we do that daily? No, we have failed, but God is gracious. But every time we insult our spouse, put her down or put him down, all right, in front of the others or in front of the children, the spirit of God is insulted. That's what the verse says. How much more severely do you think someone deserves to be punished who has trampled the Son of God underfoot and has treated as an unholy thing the blood of the covenant that sanctified them and who has insulted the spirit of grace. Right? Covenant is something holy which you cannot break. You take it in the presence of God. You stood marriage on a, on a wedding day. You stood on the blood of Jesus Christ. Right? And we took the promise. How many times have you failed? Maybe you have not got this message. You got the message today. Covenant today, is holy. Today, if you hear the voice of God, do not harden your heart. Remember that the marriage covenant, it's a sacred thing. It's a holy relationship that you have, we have come into. Are we revering the relationship that God has given to us? Are we faithful to each other? Do we have any emotional attachment to somebody else? Or are we messing with our life when we are youth and then thinking that I can get away with that? Are we a good news or a bad news to the people around us? When God called Abraham, it gave him a mandate from Genesis chapter 18 and verse 19. You know, why, do, why did I call Abraham? To be, to, uh, to tell the world about what my righteousness. What is right and what is just. Right. Why I chosen Abraham as a family. So he will do what is right and just and he will teach his household and his children. And the people around him. So every family here, you have been called with a mandate to do right and just through which we will Reflect the triune nature of God and through which you will be a gospel. And the young people here, prepare yourself. Right? Pray that God will give you the best. As you are young, are you doing a right thing? As Paul told Timothy that he said, don't, uh, uh, when you, you are a young person. 1 Timothy, 1 chapter, Timothy chapter 4 chapter verse 12. Uh, he says, don't allow anybody to look down upon you. Yeah. Right? Young people, prepare yourself for marriage. Even you have been called to be just and right. Just like Abraham. We are children of Abraham. Was the promise to Abraham fulfilled? Right. Do you, uh, do you come under the promise, that promise? Yes. Galatians chapter 3, it says... Those who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ are all children of Abraham. And how is the world going to be blessed? 
It's going to be blessed through you and me, Christians. Your family and my family to be the gospel. Right? So covenant means husband, wife, and God. So triune nature, this union is called a covenant relationship. Because it is a covenant relationship, I cannot say to myself, you follow your religion, I follow my religion. Right. Okay? In case Let us not you uh, are in love with somebody, young people, in case you are in love with somebody who, is, who does not worship Jesus Christ, this is what will happen, right? In case I'm, a, I'm an unbeliever and she's a believer, right? Okay, you follow. I will not encroach you. I, I will not trouble you. Okay, I you go to you church. Space. I'll go to my temple. Okay. Right? We will respect each other. We will respect each other. When there is a problem, I go to my God. I'll go to my powerful God. Are we becoming one? No. But we, when we worship the same God, Peter. We have problems. We are fighting like dogs and cats. Yes. Huh? Yes, yes. So Worse than that. Uh, hmm. So let's, let's go to God because he stood as a witness. Yeah, he also said, no, I'm the huh. witness. He said, yeah. no. Okay, and let's, all our witnesses, no. Huh. Yesterday I went to our uh, uncle and asked him, huh. see, we're having problems at home. Huh. Their uncle said, your dad asked me to come and sign this uh, um, that, uh, signature, sign the Marriage uh, register. register. I signed it and he gave me very good biryani. And at the same night, the biryani digested. Okay. With that, it's over. I have my own problems. You don't come to me for your problems, he said. So oh. let's go to God. Come. What happens now? If you worship the same God and the living God, He brings us together, you become one. So, don't use marriage for evangelism. Marriage is not for evangelism. Young young guns here, right? Because <laughs> we know how to use our Christian jargon to cover up our, our own mistakes. One girl married an unbeliever and she said she's a very good believer and after that, after two children, problems. She asked Sally Akha, I am a very strong believer and I married somebody from some other religion, right? Then we have two children, now he's not allowing me to go to the church. He's not allowing me to take my children to the Sunday school. She is, Sally asked her, why did you marry him? No, Ka, the Bible says, love everybody. We all have a verse. We know how to twist the scriptures. Right? This is a command. I Do said, not be yoked because, with unbelievers. Because I said, because you are twisting the word of God, the same word of God will be measured unto you. Because God's, you said love everybody, now it is your duty to love. Why you want to come away from that? Now why you are struggling? So, it's, it's much struggle, you don't understand. It's a spiritual struggle. Okay, so we need to be obedient to God and come into a covenant relationship. So, it is youngsters, guard yourself from people who are not uh, unbelievers, okay? And those unbelievers, they may look like, you may say, they are better than Christians. Christian boys and Christian girls. These are the words that you use. Mm. That is, usually, the devil usually That's comes a trap for you. as a masqueraded or a veiled one. So, be careful. We want to warn you for that, okay? So, marriage is a, a beautiful union. It's a covenant relationship. It's a promise. God is present in our relationship. He is the third person in our relationship. So, are we doing right and just in our marriage? Are we living a right life? Are we re re respecting? Are we, are we really loving our spouse? So I want to place you a, only one question. The first question, the Lord, King of King and the Lord of Lord asked the question. What is the first question in the Bible? Adam, now God is asking you the question. Where are you from your spouse? How far are you 
away, away from, from your God. spouse. And how far you? You're gone. So and we want to tell you how far you away from God. And couples, how far you away from God? How far you away from your spouse? Let's pray. How far you away from God? And how far you you are away from your spouse? Right? Are we doing marriage right is a just? call? It's a holy covenant. Youngsters, prepare for it. Right? Father God, we want to thank you, Lord, for this wonderful morning. We want to thank you and praise you, Lord, for the institution that you have created, Master. It's your design, Lord. It is not our design. It is not cultural, Lord. It is not society's pressure, Lord. It is the institution that you have designed for all of us. Father, we want to thank you, Lord, for all the, Lord, the things that you have taught how to behave in our marriage, Master. You have not left us as orphans, Lord. You have given us the rules and regulation how we need to follow you, Master. Jesus. Father, we want to thank you, Lord. We, we commit our, all of us into your hands of mercy. Those who are youngsters, help them to live a life which is right and just. And those who are married, Master, help them to love each other, Lord, and live a life of right and just. Help them to be a gospel. Help them to become one. Help them to be a model of a heaven on earth, Master. We commit all the elders of the church, and all the people, Lord, pray that, Lord, you will bless them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.